dear students here we are having a theory which is based on the magnetic field magnetic field inside a long current carrying solenoid basically if we go through the solenoid what is basically solenoid solenoid means it is having a turns which is in the helix shape and its diameter is less means we can say the length is more than the diameter and when the current flows through it it has a magnetic effect and that magnetic effect make it a magnet and here if we say the current is flowing like this inside this we have taken a solid here solenoid here the current will be blowing here it is assume it is a north side and here it is a south side so it will become a magnet when there will be flow of current okay so current is flowing inside this there will be flow if we are assuming the flow inside this means it is bonded on this so there will be flow of this and it is coming out this so there will be the magnetic field which is we can say the magnetic field will be like this it is flowing like this near it is in this okay similarly at bottom the magnetic field will be like this so uh, there will be n number of turns per unit length of a solenoid so if we go through it we will find that there will be the magnetic field like this and at the center it will become a straight line so here we will have a north field and north south pole and here it is south basically it is north south north south the poles always existing pairs and because of that it becomes a, a magnet north south north south north south like that now if we go through this solenoid and we want to calculate magnetic field at this point p so for calculating the magnetic field we can have the magnetic field at this point because of this current element dx so according to biosevets law we will have mu not upon 4 pi 2 pi and dx this length we have taken into consideration multiplied with current i into r square divided by r square plus x square whole to the power 3 by 2 this at this point p we want to determine the magnetic field so if we if we take this we will go through we have taken a ac which is perpendicular to bp this dx is the current element because of this magnetic field here at point p and we are going to determine the magnetic field at point p and also at the ends and at the mid side inside the magnet so we are taking this x this is as a y solenoid lamp this we are taking the radius r and this is the axial point okay now this point p where we want to know the magnetic field because of this dx current element now we have taken a we have connected this to p and we also joined p to b so we are having a triangle but from a we have a perpendicular ac on bp ac on bp now here we have taken this as a very small angle means say bpa is a very small angle that is d alpha and similarly we have taken another angle that is from y p o this is your alpha 2 and similarly we have taken an another angle bp this o bpo that is alpha similarly we have taken an another angle xpo that we can say xpo that is alpha 1 so we have taken one another angle alpha 1 alpha is the angle this one means from bpo this similarly we have taken alpha 2 which is from here to this and d alpha is a very small angle which we have taken now if we go through this alpha plus d alpha alpha plus d alpha angle ap max with the axis ap is making with this axis similarly angle alpha bp 
max with the axis. Now we are taking this OA that is radius, radius of the solenoid. Similarly, OP. Now this OP from this point. OP. OP is X that we have taken X and AB which is DX. Now we go through the angle ABP. ABP which is equal to angle BPO because these are the two parallel lines and these are the alternate interior angles. So, angle ABP which is equal to angle BPO which is equal to alpha. This angle is alpha. Now, if we go through this AP, this is AP, we have taken it Y. Now, AC is this one and AP is this one. So, AC upon Y will give the angle because if we see AC is perpendicular and AP is hypotenuse which we can take sin d alpha and it is a very small angle so sin d alpha will be equal to d alpha so ultimately ac upon y is equal to d alpha so ac is equal to y d alpha okay now if we go through the angle a triangle abc triangle abc this one now in triangle abc ac is perpendicular to bp angle c is equal to 90 degree this angle is equal to 90 degree so sin alpha will be AC upon AB. AC upon AB. Okay. So AC upon AB means AC is equal to we have taken this y, L, y into D alpha and AB which we have taken DX. This. So we have substituted this. Now if you go through the right angle triangle AOP. Now you go through this. AOP this one. So if we go through the triangle AOP then it is alpha plus d alpha. So sine of alpha plus d, d alpha and d alpha is a very small angle. So we can assume it is equal to sine alpha. Now sine alpha will be equal to r upon y. Perpendicular upon hypotenuse. So this is your perpendicular and this is your hypotenuse. AP is hypotenuse and perpendicular is AO. So we have got sine alpha is equal to r upon y. Now if we go through this, it is your x, it is your r, it is your y. So according to Pythagoras theorem, we have perpendicular square plus base square is equal to hypotenuse square. So we have got a relation y square is equal to r square plus x square. So finally we have got all the relation. Now if we go through this, db which we want, we will not upon 4 by 2 pi l and we have already calculated here y of d alpha upon sin alpha <coughs> into ir square upon y square whole to the power 3 by 2 that we have got this relation from here okay so mu naught upon 4 by 2 pi m y d alpha sin alpha will be in denominator it is y cube and i r square. Now we know that r square upon y square. r upon y that is sin square alpha. So sin square here, if we go through this, it is 2 pi l i d alpha r square upon y square sin alpha. Now you think that y cube, where is this y and this y cube. So it is y square, we have taken it. So mu naught upon 4 pi into 2 pi n i d alpha upon sin alpha into r square upon y square. Now r square upon y square that is sin square alpha. So sin square alpha upon sin alpha will give you the sin alpha. It is mu naught. Now 2 pi to 2, 4 pi cancel, it is 2. n as it is, i as it is sin alpha. Now we have got the value because of this d alpha only as for a small angle. Now if we talk about whole angle, then we have to integrate it. So we have taken the integration from alpha 1 to alpha 2. So alpha 1 to alpha 2 sin alpha d alpha mu naught upon 2 n i. So b, integration of this, b mu naught n i upon 2 and integrate. When we will integrate, we will get minus cos alpha and we will substitute the value minus cos alpha 2 upper limit plus minus minus plus cos alpha 1 
So finally we have got mu naught n i upon cos alpha 1 minus cos alpha 2. Now we will substitute alpha 1 equal to 0. Why we are substituting alpha 1 equal to 0? We are taking this. This point x is here. And alpha 2 is 90 degree. Means this angle is like this. So we are at the end. Here. At the end if you want to know the magnitude of the magnetic field in, uh, in solenoid. We are taking this alpha 1 that is 0 means we are on this axis means at this point and alpha 2 is 90 degree means like this so at the end at both the ends of the uh, solenoid how much magnetic field we will have mu naught into ni upon 2 we have substituted the value alpha 1 equals to 0 and alpha 2 is equals to 90 degree so finally we will get cos 90 is 0 and alpha 1 is uh, cos 0 is 1 so mu naught n i upon 2. This will give the magnetic field at both the ends. Now in between means at the inside the magnetic field. So for uh, to know the inside the magnetic field, we will substitute the value of alpha 1 equals to 0. And alpha 2 is equal to 180 degree. Means it is just like this. This angle is of 180 degree. Alpha 1 is 0. And alpha 2 is 180 degree. That we are taking. So, we will have this cos 0 and cos 180 is also minus 1. So, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1 means 1 plus 1, 2. This will cancel out and inside this, we will have the magnetic field mu naught into n into i. So, this way we can determine the magnetic field and sometimes here we are having magnetic field, maximum magnetic field that is mu naught into n into i, n is the number of turns per unit length and i is the current flowing through the coil, through the turns of the solenoids and similarly at the end, at both the ends we have the magnetic field that is mu naught n i upon 2. So we can say at both the ends the magnetic field will be half of the magnetic field inside the magnet inside the solenoid so once we have got this relation we can go with the numericals on the basis of this so join the channel share the video to others so they will come to understand how we will approach towards the numericals so stay with us